Good morning. Uh, if we can uh, just please dim the light uh, a little bit and put that video on for me, please. That's how Nate starts a fire. <laughs> can you put it back again, please? Back again. <laughs> I just have a good, put the sound up. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh. Feel the hate of that. That's how Nate starts the fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory, this is my son-in-law, and the voice is my daughter. And uh, they went camping, and uh, they're trying to light a fire, but I like the idea of bringing a, a battery uh, blower just to blow <laughs> the fire, to make it increase. Uh, hallelujah. I just love it. <laughs> That's why I say I need to show you this video. And I'm going to talk about the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of God this morning, the fire that can bring a change into your life this morning. Amen? So let's go to the scripture. Can we get, just stand up, please, as we read the scripture this morning, the word of God. Hallelujah. From 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. That is why I remind you to fan into the flame the gracious gift of God. That inner fire, the special endowment which is in you through the laying on my hands with those of the elders of your ordination. I think this is not starting from the beginning. Let me get from my word here. This is why I would remind you to stir up Rekindle the embers, fan the flame of, keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by means of the laying on my hands with those of the elders of your, at your ordination. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving and cringing and fawning fear. But he has given us a spirit of power and a love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I love this uh, scripture. I love this verse this morning. And uh, has, has been, uh, I have been uh, meditating And, and, and focusing on this word, and God just brings something in my spirit. And I thank God that I'm here this morning. Thank you, Mandy and Graham, for giving me that opportunity to bring the word of God. And I don't take it for granted. Just because the Lord appointed a time like this for me to bring the word of God. So, if you look at the scripture... Paul is telling Timothy to stir up, to fan, to rekindle the embers, to fan the flame, and keep it burning. As you know, Paul, I think he was in jail, isn't it? Am I right, Pastor Dale? He was in jail. And he's sending that letter to young Timothy. And he's saying to Timothy, My son, I want you to rekindle the embers, to fan that fire that is in you. And as you know, Timothy has been growing up in a household where the word was spoken to him all the time from his mother and mother-in-law. That is Lois. And uh, grandmother, is it? Yeah. And, but Timothy has been receiving the word of God all the time. But when Paul was mentioning that to him, I don't know if Timothy at that time, he had that spirit of timidity, of cowardice, or of fear. I don't know. 
But at the same time, Paul was telling him, Hey, Timothy, you need uh, to rekindle the embers of fire. Why? Why Paul was saying that to Timothy? And I believe that it is our job. It is our job to keep the fire burning. It is our job to stir up the embers and to flame the fire that is within us. It is our job. Hallelujah. And when he talk about timidity, and that, in, that means shyness. I don't know if Timothy was shy or timid. But there's something there that Paul is saying to him. Don't let that Timothy, that, sorry, that timidity get into you. Don't let shyness get into you. But instead, keep that fire burning. Because if there's no fire, there will be timidity. There will be shyness. There will be cowardice. If there is no fire in my life, I will be the most timid, the most shy, the most shy person that is living and talking to you right now. Let me, let me tell you something before I became a Christian. I got converted when I was like 17 years old in uh, the year 1983. And I have an, 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 an amazing encounter with God. But then after two days, some of my friends, they said to me, Manoj, I want you to come to a meeting. We're going to have like a prayer meeting. But I have to tell you that before my conversion, I was so shy, so timid. And I have that sort of uh, inferiority complex about myself. That if a girl come to me and start to talk to me, I will be so shy to talk to that girl. And you know, but, uh, back home I had my brother at that time. My brother was very good looking and you know, and, and all the time the phone will ring, where is Jay? That's my brother. But no one was interested to talk to me. <laughs> and you know, there was that sort of complexity in me that I'm ugly. There's nothing good in me. But when I got converted, and then the ne after two days, I went to that meeting. Uh, a lot of uh, in that meeting was young people. Uh, and uh, the prayer meeting was amazing. The prayer meeting was like, like, you know, getting the roof off that house at that time. Uh, but something happened that I never heard about speaking in tongues. But in that prayer meeting... Uh, the Holy Spirit came over me. The fire of God fell over me. And I start to speak in tongue. Rambo Koshu, Ramba Kanto Korea, Robo Roboro. Hallelujah. The fire of God fall upon me. And then the next day, my friend said to me, Let us go to the hospital. And I went with them. And in that hospital, I saw the demonstration of the power of God. And we were witnessing to people sick on the bed. People was just getting off that bed, been, 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 uh, been uh, healed, uh, been delivered from, from demon passes. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Because you know what? When the fire, when you start to fan the fire, there's no place for timidity. No place for cowardice. No place for for being afraid. No place for being even worried. Look at uh, the, uh, uh, of, of David in the Bible. He was a young guy. He went to take some food for his brother. And when he saw the big giant trying to embarrass and intimidating the people of Israel. And he said to his brother, who is that Philistine who is trying to defy the name of the God of Israel? And the brothers tried to shut him up. 
And this is what happens when you don't have, sorry, when you have the fire. The devil will try to shut you up. But I believe uh, there was such a fire in the young boy, David, uh, that when he went uh, to that Philistine, to that giant, uh, and he said to that giant, you come to me with sword, with javelin, with whatever weapon you're coming against me. But I come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel, the host of the angels army. I come to you to defeat you. And I tell you what, when you have the fire of the Holy Spirit in you, the giant won't make you be afraid. Saul was afraid. He was a coward. The army was so afraid. They could not do nothing. But the fire that was in the little boy, David, come over him and defeat that giant. Hallelujah. Now you say to me, how can we keep, how can we stir that fire? Maybe this is a question this morning. Eh? How can we stir that, passion, that, that fire, that passion for God? You know, I was thinking, in a cold winter morning, and you're sleeping, your, your bed is so cozy, and you know that you have to go to work. You have to get up 7 o'clock in the morning to go to work. So what happened? If you stay in that bed and you keep on sleeping, how, what will happen? You won't go to work. And you won't get the money to pay your bill, to buy your food. But there's something that will stir you up uh, to get up. You know that you have to get up that bed and get ready to go to work. And you will do it because you're stirring yourself. Last Monday, every, sorry, every Monday, my, my, my little baby love, uh, blessing and Regina's baby, sorry. I mean, my baby love. <laughs> she will come home. Uh, and I know that in, on Monday morning she will come home, so I will have to get up. My little granddaughter is coming. Uh, and then she came, and I opened the door, and blessing just to give her to me. And I was holding her, her so happy, you know. And then she turned around, and she said, Where's Grandma? <laughs> and uh, Grandma was not here. <laughs> She had an appointment, and she went uh, to, uh, uh, to have some medical check checkup. And this is the first time that I heard uh, baby love speaking a phrase. Where is grandma? Where is grandma? So this is the thing, you know, when you stir up your heart to get up uh, and to do what you have to do, you have to start stirring yourself up. And uh, this, will, this will take me to the story of Moses in the Bible. You all know Moses? Anyone don't know Moses? <laughs> so in Moses, uh, I mean, in, in Exodus chapter 3, we read about Moses, all right? Moses spent 40 days in the wilderness, fleeing from Egypt. 40, sorry, 40 years in the wilderness. And for 40 years, he did not care nothing. He was just that man looking after the sheep, taking care of, of the sheep of his father-in-law. Nothing. But suddenly, suddenly something happened to him. Suddenly when he was on that mountain, something caught his attention some things that he never seen before. So the Bible says he saw the burning bush. And when he saw the burning bush, he said, I'm going to turn around to see why this bush is burning and not stopping burning. So he turned around. And I believe at that moment, Moses was stirring his heart to turn around to see what is happening and maybe he has to climb some mountain to get there, to that bush. But then, when he got to that bush, 
He heard the voice of God. Moses, Moses. This is the first time he heard the voice of God. Moses, Moses. The ground that you are standing is holy ground. Take your shoes off. Very interesting. And I believe something happened when we come to the place of standing on holy ground. Because holy ground will always have a fire. And when Moses get onto that holy ground, there's something that he has to take off. Something that has been in his heart for years. Because fire will always burn through you and bring out the dross. And for years, Moses had something in his heart that he was not aware of. And when he came to the presence, to the fire of God, God told him to take your shoes off. What was in the heart of Moses? Going back 40 years ago, Moses, out of anger, killed an Egyptian. Out of anger, he killed an Egyptian. And through all these years, Moses has been carrying that anger in his heart. All these years. But when it comes time for him to stand in the presence, in the fire of God, something has to come off. Hallelujah. When we come under the fire of God, God starts to bring things sometimes that we don't realize that these things are here. I don't know about you. It could be anger. It could be bitterness, jealousy, adultery, envy, proud. When you come in the fire of God, you start to burn and bring the dross out. So that's amazing. I want to be in that fire. I don't know about you, but I want to be in, in that fire. There are sometimes things in our heart that we're carrying, unless we come in that fire we just surface, the dross will come out. And, and amazingly, if you go to, if you go to uh, the book of Numbers, I think chapter 20, you will see there was a time where the people of Israel was complaining about there's no water. And they said to Moses, we want water. Give us water. You have brought us in this place. There's nothing. It's dry. But then they were complaining, murmuring in the wilderness. And Aaron and Moses went to the Lord and seek the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, take your rod and go to the rock and speak to the rock. And water will come out. But what did Moses do? What did he do? He struck the rock, not once, but twice. But this happened in the past where the Lord told him, strike the rock and the water will come out. But this time, I believe that, that anger resurfaced again in him. And he was so angry with the people that he struck the rock once and twice. And when this happened, the Lord said to him, because of your disobedience, uh, you're going to not get into the, the promised land. And the promised land was so close, uh, so, so, so close uh, for Moses to enter him. Uh, that's an amazing thing. But uh, we have to keep uh, burning and stirring up that fire in our hearts. Uh, in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12 to 13. And the fire upon the altar shall be kept burning on it. 
It shall not be allowed to go out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and he shall burn on it that the fat of the peace offering. The fire shall be burning continually upon the altar. It shall not go out. And remember, that fire was not started by men. That fire started by God himself sending the fire on the altar. And this happened many times in the Bible. David, when he was in the temple, and then his son Solomon, it happened as well. So there's a lot of fire in the Bible, you know that? The pillar of fire that was giving light to the people of, of Israel in the night time. The fire that came on Mount Sinai and the people say, Moses, you go. But we are, not af we are too afraid to go near the mountain. The fire of the Holy Spirit that come down like tongues of fire upon the people. In the book of Acts chapter 2. The Bible speaks a lot of uh, uh, things of fire. But many things will come to put that fire out. Rain, wind, storm of life. Problems in your lives. Difficulties in your lives will try to suppress that fire that is in you. Many things will come. And I believe in Nathan, when you put that fire there, you know, if there was a heavy rain, next day that fire won't be there. But Paul, that's why Paul said to Timothy, I would remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers, fan the flame. Then he said, God did not give us a spirit of timidity. Hallelujah. When that spirit of timidity, of timidity is gone, this is where you know that the fire is gone. How come some people are bold? Because of the fire. When the fire comes, you're not timid, neither shy, neither worried. And that's exactly what happened to me. I was very shy. I could not even talk to a girl. But I tell you, <laughs> I tell you what happened. The day I met Shayla in the bus. <laughs> she, she came and, and sat next to me on that bus. And you know what I did? Can you get up, Shayla, please? Just one minute. Come on, one minute. One minute. <laughs> I was not shy at all to hold her hand like this. And I said, Shayla, I have a feeling for you. <laughs> But you see, before the fire, I was very shy. But after the fire, I'm not shy anymore. <laughs> and that comes when we speak about Peter in the Bible. Peter, before the fire, he was a man that denied Jesus a few times. But after the fire, the boldness come upon, upon Peter's heart. And he spoke the word. And 3,000 people got saved. Hallelujah. Oh, give the Lord a clap. Hallelujah. Because I believe when the fire of God come upon you, there's such a boldness that come into your life. Hallelujah. A boldness that can't quench that fire of God in you. Hey, hallelujah. I'm on fire right now. I don't know about you. I'm on fire. <laughs> The fire supersedes your concern. When the fire dies, all you will do, I can't do that. I can't preach. Imagine me before the fire. I will never be able to stand in front of you people to preach the word of God. I will never be able to do that because I was too timid, too afraid that today I can't stand in front of you because of the fire that is burning through me to preach the gospel of the living God. Amen? Hallelujah. So, stir up, rekindle, fame the flame, keep burning. And then you have to protect the fire too. 
we have the inner fires that have been lit up by the Holy Ghost. All right? So like I said, Moses in the, in the burning bush. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. As long as you stay in the fire, the devil won't be able to get close to you. You hear that? As long as you stay in the fire, the devil won't be able to get close to you. Remember of Daniel, three friends. What's the name, Mashak? Shadrach, Mashach, Abednego. What happened? They got into the fire. And in that fire, Jesus was walking with them in the fire. The king thought that he's going to put them in the fire. They're going to get burned. But they did not get burned. But the devil got burned. Because the devil can't get close to that fire. But Jesus was walking with them in the fire. And in that fire, they could not uh, get burned. But Jesus was with them. And in Luke, uh, so well, the question now is, why fire? All right? Why the fire? In Luke chapter 3 verse 16, John said, uh, I baptize you with water. But there's someone greater than me is coming. Greater someone is coming. And he is what? He is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost power and with fire. Jesus is coming to baptize you with the Holy Ghost power. Spirit and fire. He is a baptizer this morning. And he wants to baptize you with that fire. Hallelujah. He, want, he, just, he doesn't want to be only your savior or your redeemer. But he wants to be your baptizer. Hallelujah. So if you have come in this place this morning, you saw that Jesus only come to save you and to redeem you. You are wrong. But he has come to baptize each one of us with the Holy Ghost and fire this morning. Because without that fire, you can't be an overcomer. Hallelujah. Fire. You need the fire. So that you can walk in victory. Have you ever seen uh, a rocket take off? I think you've all been looking at NASA <laughs> when they send the rocket up. And you can see when the rocket starts to take off, there is fire. Is there fire? Yes! Is that uh, that, that, that strong fire that is trying to propel that rocket into the atmosphere. And that fire that try to bring that rocket up higher and higher. So I'm telling you that that fire will break any gravity that is trying to pull that rocket down the earth. And I believe this morning... The fire of the Holy Spirit in you when you flame and you, you, you fan and stir that fire. That fire will break any sin in your life that is trying to pull you down. The fire. I put it this way. Fire in your life will cause you to break the gravity of sin. The flesh and the world. Fire will help you overcome. There's nothing that you're facing right now that the fire of God could not break you out of. It's a fire of heaven that will launch you, that will take you places. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in, in one accord, in one place, and suddenly, suddenly came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind filled the place. And there was tongues of fire on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak 
with all the language, all the tongue. When the fire of God comes over you, you can't be quiet. When the fire of God come over you, young man, young ladies, you can't be quiet. There's something that will take place in your spirit for you to voice what God has put in your heart, the fire of God. Are you with me? Until the fire consumes your life, there is a fire available for each one of us here this morning. There is a fire available. Amen. To set you apart, a fire that cannot be quenched, a fire that will burn in you, a fire that will get stronger and stronger until Jesus comes to take you home. Amen. Am I doing on time, Graham? All right. Uh, another five minutes, please. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, we have been receiving the word of God here in this church. We got Pastor Dale, the teacher of the word, that brings strong words sometimes. Yes, sometimes we have uh, the milk of the word. But most of the time we have the meat of the word. Pastor Graham, Pastor Mandy, I tell you what, this man, I have known him for how many years now? 17, 18, maybe 20 years. And uh, I can say, man, I see the fire of God upon you. It doesn't matter what sickness is doing in your body. But the fire of God is increasing. The fire of God is increasing. It doesn't matter. I was talking to Pastor Gary this morning. Sometimes we go to much hard time. He was talking about some people in China that got their head chopped off. But you know what? They did not allow this thing to put the fire of God down in their lives. And that's what's happening with my brother. He will refuse uh, to let the fire go down. Pastor Gary, I was thinking of him this morning. Man, I went to India in Delhi. That man preached with fire. 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 And you know what? When he used to preach uh, in the church in Wentworthville, that started in West Mid before, he would go like this. On fire, st stepping on the chair, and then one little lady, her name was Mary Dari. Oh, Pastor, don't do that! Don't do that! <laughs> you have you come to that church, rich church, Pramata. You're receiving the word of God. You're receiving the strong, the meat of the word of God. But you know what? Let me tell you, when I go to, re to a restaurant, and I love to have steak, all right? And when I order my steak, I like my steak well done, all right? <laughs> Some people, they will like the steak, the meat, rare or medium. But for me, you know, when I eat the steak, I like it to be well done. Because if it is rare or medium, you still find a little bit of blood in the middle sometimes. Is it? Am I right? Am I right? A little bit of blood, that means it's not well cooked inside. <laughs> <laughs> All right? But the amazing thing is, you know, one day when I go to heaven, Jesus will say to me, well done, <laughs> good and faithful. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus won't say to me, Medium, rare, servant of God, you know, but well done. <laughs> and, and another thing is, you know, when I go to Woolies, I like to buy a pie. And the name of the pie is uh, Herbert Adams. You heard of that? All right. I love this pie. They got different 
you know, flavor meat or whatever you call it. But sometimes I'll take the pie and I will put the pie in the microwave for two minutes maybe, two and a half minutes. And then the pie will come out very, very hot outside. And when I start to, you know, get into the pie and get into the middle, I see the pie is still frozen. And this is exactly what happened to us sometime. We come to the church. We receive the word of God. And the word of God brings some sort of heat in our body. But right deep in the inside of us, the word of God has not been penetrating. Because when you receive the word of God, the word of God has to cut through and through to your flesh and get to your bones. And that's why it says here in the book of Jeremiah, when Jeremiah said, the word of God is like a fire locked in my bones that I could not contain it. So if you come to church just to have a little bit of tickling in your ears and get warm up a little bit about the word of God until you let the word of God get deep in your bones. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? The book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus said, because your knees are hot or cold, because you are lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. That's a very, very scary verse. How, how, how is your condition this morning? Are you lukewarm, cold, or are you on fire for God? Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 12, verse 49, I'm reading from the Passion Translation, and this is Jesus talking here. I have come to set the earth on fire, and how, and how I long for every heart to be already ablaze with this fiery passion for God. Amen? In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, oh, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you're not your own? The Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Can you just dim the light, please, a little bit? A bit more. This is the light that God ignites in our heart. A light can be very small like this, but when you start to put wood on it, when you start to put uh, kerosene on it, it will become a big fire. But you can leave uh, and let the, the light be like this. Remember, like I said uh, in the Old Testament, it was God himself uh, who put the fire on the altar. And he said, you need to keep that fire burning 24 hours a day. And now that we are the Holy you know, the temple of the Holy Spirit, how much we have to keep that fire burning. Because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So this morning, before you leave this place, I want you to think twice. Are you going to fan the flame of fire that has already been in you? If this is you this morning, you have come to the right place to start something, to start igniting that fire. Because like I said, without the fire of the Holy Spirit, we can't do nothing, we can't move. We can't do nothing, brother. So my prayer this morning is, God, help me, Lord. 
Help me, Lord. Help me have a passion for you. Help me have a desire to serve you. Help me to go and move by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can we stand up as we sing that song this morning? Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us sing that song this morning with a passion in our hearts. If we really want to um, defend the flame uh, that already inside us, uh, that fire that is already inside us. Uh. Thank you, Jesus. Stir a passion in my heart, God. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Stir a passion in my heart, God. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. So stir a passion. Stir a passion in my heart, God. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Stir a passion, Lord. Stir a passion in my heart, God. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Stir a passion. Stir a passion in my heart, God. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Sing, let it rise. Let it rise, let it rise. Holy fire burn inside. Let it rise, let it rise. Oh, for Jesus. Let it rise, let it rise. Holy fire burn inside. Let it rise, let it rise. Oh, for Jesus. Let it rise, let it rise, let it rise. Holy fire burn inside, let it rise, let it rise, oh for Jesus, let it rise, let it rise, holy fire burn inside, let it rise, let it rise, oh for Jesus. Six star of passion. Oh, stir a passion in my heart, God. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Stir a passion in my heart, God. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Stir a passion, Lord. Stir a Passion in my heart, God, let it overflow, let it overflow. Stir up passion in my heart, God, let it overflow, let it Let it rise, let it rise. 
Let it rise, let it rise.